So we're using the verses of the Gita to help us find our path. And often we think it's different paths for everyone, but not really. Right? All of us are essentially divine, and we are having this physical experience in the body. And so very many things are the same for all of us. And most of us are seeking um, peace, love, joy. So the path's going to be the same. Even though we may think there's slight variations, essence is the same. So we saw yesterday the very first verse that uh, Krishna said, where he talks about um, kashmalamidam, where is this dirt coming from? And we saw those qualities of being Aryan, being um, worthy of heaven, and we saw uh, Kirti, having that sense of character that brings praise to us. We see that soon after that, Arjuna asked the question, which then starts the Bhagavad Gita. And Arjuna's question is, Karpanya dosho pahata swabhava, that I've, I'm clouded, I'm, I'm confused, I'm, I'm all mixed up. I, I don't know what to do. And so tell me very clearly. And the word he uses is Shreyas. Tell me what is Shreyas. Now he doesn't say, what should I do? Because actually that's quite clear. It's a war they, on the battlefield. The, the first arrow has effectively been shot. It, you don't need to know what to do. Okay? And very often in our lives as well, what to do is, sure, we have a choice of what to do, but work, all right? Or in the relationship, whatever responsibility that we have, fulfill. <clears throat> Usually the confusion is in dealing with all the emotions of, of, as we mentioned yesterday, I don't want to, or this is unfair, or how nice it would be if it was something different than what it is. This is another thing. We, 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 live, in, we live in this reality, and we live in our own semi-fantasy worlds. In our semi-fantasy worlds, the, you know, it's not the way it is right here. It's the way we want it to be. And in that semi-fantasy world of me being uh, free from this person, me being free from this problem, me being free from a certain um, personality trait or maybe a physical trait, it's, it's not. It's just, it's simply dreaming. <laughs> and this world that goes on in our head, it's just me dreaming. And that's why... So much of spirituality is wake up. And it's not that we fast asleep physically. It's that we are dreaming while awake. And then sometimes perpetuated by extra time in our lives. You're sitting in traffic or, you know, waiting for the elevator, waiting for a flight. There's nothing much to do. Dream. <laughs> daydream about desires or about possible scenarios or about it's sometimes so unrealistic sometimes realistic you know we're just amending things that we want happening in our lives <clears throat> so not what should i do because if we awake and alert and present what needs to be done right now is fairly clear yeah and yeah. some decision might need to be made and even that Fairly clear. What's not clear is what is best and, or how best. So Shreyas, the word Shreyas, comes even in Katha Upanishad. And um, really a word to live, like what our path is, which path should we walk, Shreyas. Now the opposite of Shreyas also well known, prayers. And I'm going to do it very quickly because it's something that's basic and most of y'all would have heard it before. Prayas is when we give in to something which is immediately gratifying and then later on you pay. Yeah. So something like um, you overeat and, and then uh, food coma. You feel so lethargic. Yeah. 
And then that lethargy can last quite long, right? And this is not even a health issue. This is just food coma, uncomfortable. If you have an health issue, then the ripple effect can be even worse. Or, or something like you finished episode two of whatever it is you are currently watching, and then they always leave on a cliffhanger. So you play three, then you play four, then you play five, and then it's 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> hey, how did it become 4.30 in the morning? Of course, it's going to be 4.30 in the morning. Each episode is that long. And some people try to watch it on one and a half speed to make it go faster so that you don't. But it's still going to be that long. And then, you know, you're so tired, and then you're so irritable, and then you're so... Mm. And then it takes three whole days to get back into your sleep pattern. Yeah. So immediate pleasure, and then long term, well, it's not suffering, but it's suffering. Mm. Discomfort, inconvenience, um, prayers, which we're doing all the time. And I think we do it the most with our mobile phones. Anyway, I'll just finish this. And this, this, we just give in to it so quickly. Yeah. Someone's talking to us also when it beeps, and they, they're talking. <laughs> and we're all so guilty of it, right? It's prayers. It's that endorphin hit we get when the phone beeps, and we think we wanted, <laughs> we liked. Or we're just curious, what is it? What kind of stimulation is it offering me right now? <clears throat> and then we don't see the long-term effect of that as evidently. Like if I stayed up, I can see the, the discomfort immediately the next day in my fatigue. But you know, with the phone, we don't see that we just get more and more and more addicted. We just become more and more impersonal with each other and insensitive to each other. Yeah. And we, we, we almost numbed because it's happening slowly. Yeah. We numb to the effect of the discomfort, disadvantage, desensitization of who we are as social beings. Mm. Shreyas is the exact opposite. Shreyas is immediate discipline, which might require control, not giving in, it might require exerting, and then we reap the benefits of it. So exercise is a great one for this. And for those of you who listen to me regularly, you all know I don't like to exercise. But you know, this is something we must do. And then because my dislike for exercise is quite significant, I don't do it on my own. <laughs> but because I know I don't do it on my own, I have a teacher come to the ashram and ring the doorbell to remind me and make me do the class. And so often I'll open the door and I'll be like, no, why did you come? <laughs> like, you told me to come? <laughs> She's so used to me, it doesn't even face her anymore. <laughs> so this immediate like, oh, now I have to exercise. Mm. And then, of course, after the class, you feel great. I feel great. Yeah. Anyone who's exercised after the class, we feel good. The body feels better. You feel you did something you should have done. right? And of course, endorphins are released. So you actually, your mood will have improved. So initially, you don't want to, but you do it, and then you feel better. Or some conversation you need to have with someone and you keep postponing, postponing, you don't want to have that conversation. You have the conversation, it's difficult, you might have to like smile or be awkward for a while and then it's done. Phew. So immediate, I'm not going to say pain, maybe it's not pleasure. <laughs> immediate is effort. Um, immediate or sometimes don't eat something, don't do something, don't go somewhere, uh, don't press the next button on the Netflix, don't like control 
switch off all the buttons, <laughs> switch off the Wi-Fi also. <laughs> That's effort and then the benefit of it. <clears throat> Now, we also, we already know this. This is not something I have to explain to elaborately. And we also already know that even though we know what's right to do, it's harder to do what's right. Even though we feel the benefits of doing what's right, it's easy to stop doing it. So mean. Like we benefiting, we enjoying it, and it's so easy to slip. Hmm. And the other one is also true. Um, it's so easy to keep doing what is not as beneficial, and it's really hard to change from that to what is beneficial. It's really easy to stop doing what's good, and it's really hard to start doing what's good. Oh. So, it's almost like the system is rigged. <laughs> so what does Arjuna ask? Tell me what is Shreyas. What is best? Not what is easy, but what is best. <clears throat> and so for us too, what is best? Recently, a lot of the social media trends in public speaking has used this word, being our authentic self. I'm sure you've heard this, right? Be your authentic self. I'm not sure exactly what that means when people say that. Because when we say be your authentic self in the Western way of thinking, which self? Because in our scriptures, we know that we are more than one person. Right? Physically, we have this body, and we are physical beings. We need to eat, need to stay warm, need to exercise, need to sleep. Yeah. Of course, each one, different amounts, quantities, etc. We are social beings, very much so. We need each other, we need relationships. We need to feel needed. We like to feel wanted. Yeah. We are social beings. We enjoy connection. Yeah. It makes things significant. It make, gives life depth. Yeah. And we are also spiritual beings. Which one's our authentic self? Because they don't always want to do the same thing. Right? Physical body will want to enjoy. Food, eat. Spiritual being might think no. Today is, actually this month is Purushottam month, mm -hmm. or it could be Ekadashi, it could be Janmashtami. No, today do not eat fast. Today is a day to do tapas, to think of the Lord, to sacrifice, to endure. So, today I'm fasting. Now this is both me. I genuinely, as a devotee, want to be fasting and increase my spiritual progress and do some form of tapas. Eyes are looking at the food in front of me and the body genuinely, authentically wants to eat. <laughs> What's this be your authentic self? Which one? Which one's my authentic self here? Mm -hmm. Interesting when the Western world uses these terms and how they use them. And then we are very interesting as Indians. We just happily go along with it. They said it must be true. <laughs> it's in vogue. <laughs> so we will also go around saying now we have to be authentic. <laughs> when weren't we authentic? <laughs> when we copy them. <laughs> <laughs> 
In my understanding, it tends to be describing our personality. Be your authentic self means your personality. As I mentioned yesterday, our personalities are not frozen in stone. If you look back on your life, I'm sure you've changed. Yeah. And so again, this be your authentic self. Yeah. When we're choosing what to do, Shreyas, no need for you to be your personality. Be what is best for everyone. Mm. I give an example to make it more clear. Let's say my personality is someone who is uh, very spontaneous and will just say what comes into their mind. Mm -hmm. Now there's an intense situation. It may be family member, something significant has happened. Maybe some health crisis in the family. Maybe some financial crisis in the family. Or, you know, maybe the kid got caught by the cops for doing something very dodgy. <laughs> Intense situation in the family going on. And then that personality of just say whatever you want to that comes into your mind and then, you know, that's me now, that's who I am, I'm highly emotional. Uh, 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 uh. Don't be yourself. <laughs> It's going to make the situation worse. Think carefully and then contribute to the conversation. Mm. Shreyas. Yeah. It could even be that somebody is very stern and strict and, you know, this is right and this is wrong. And so then they were going, in this same situation, this is right and this is wrong and that's that. No, 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 no. What's the best for this situation? And the word Shreyas is beautiful. It's not what's best for me. It's what's best for everyone in this situation. And so often it's easy to work out what's best for me because it, then this makes my life easier. Yeah. But best for everyone tends to make life a little bit difficult. Because <laughs> best for everyone means I have to a little bit endure, a little bit sacrifice, a little bit, you know, put aside my comforts. Mm -hmm. Be supportive, mm -hmm. be encouraging, be understanding, be forgiving, be patient, be accepting. <sighs> <laughs> work <laughs> what's best for everyone tends to be a little bit more work mm. tends to be yeah. and then it's not even just best for everyone who I can see it's best for everyone even the ones I can't see. In the judicial system, when they pass a law in a case that hasn't come before, the word is used precedent. Precedent means that when they rule on a case, then now this is the way they've ruled. It sets the next law. Now, every case that comes with the same kind of situation, they follow the previous one. Yeah. We do that socially also. Yeah. In some family, something happened. Maybe it was an illness. <clears throat> they kept it a secret. What do we do? We follow. Yeah. Some family, there was some difficulty between person X and person Y, and they stopped talking to each other. <laughs> and then becomes a uh, option for other people to copy. Mm. And we think, what's that? It's got nothing to do with me. <laughs> they they own people. Let them make their own decisions. Shreyas. 
Shreyas means what is good for everyone. Mm. Sometimes hard to do. I'll give a non-emotional example. Mm. Emotional examples are charged. So I'll give a non-emotional example. Maybe about 10 years ago, maybe longer. Uh, 15 years ago, global warming had already become well known. We need to change the way we are living our lives because the planet is not coping with the current way in which we are doing things. 15 years ago, if you remember, marriage invitations um, would come in this minimum, this size, and then it would be hard covered, and then there'd be shiny paper, which was quite thick for every event. You all all remember this? <clears throat> so, firstly, very expensive. But never mind that. That's so much paper wasted. Yeah. It's not thin paper, it's thick paper. And then printed with gloss, so now you cannot recycle it. Yeah. Plus, they're going to throw it in the bin. And when they get to the wedding, they're asking each other, what time do we have to be there again? Who is looking at that card? What was the purpose of that card? Mm. To inform you about the event. Yeah. That's the purpose of the card? It became more than that, but the purpose of the card was to inform you of the event. So, I said to one family who was very, not here, not here in Jakarta, I, I, I all through I travel, I, not that much also, but I travel. <clears throat> so a very prominent family, very, very well-known family, <clears throat> I said to them, make an e-card. Don't print for your wedding. They looked at me. Because Swamini, you can't say anything straight away. They just first looked at me and I said, you know, everyone looks up to you guys. You're all the trendsetters. Everybody already knows you have lots of money. So you make the e-card, then it will become the next trend. Stop wasting all this paper. Do it for the environment. Hmm. They looked at me long and hard. <laughs> to their credit, they considered it. <laughs> mm. They made fancy card this big <laughs> with thick paper. <laughs> very beautiful. It was very beautiful. It went into everybody's dustbins. <laughs> Today, we send e card, right? Mm. What is Shreyas? I look good. I follow the fashion. I help to change a trend which becomes good for the environment, even so cost effective and easier. When I'm going to the party, I'm not going to hunt around for the card. I look at my phone only. What, what time is it? <laughs> Um, it fulfills all the criteria. It's Shreyas. Yeah. Why didn't we do what is Shreyas? Why it took so long? Mm -hmm. Desire for something else. And sometimes it's not even desire, sometimes it's pressure. Oh. I don't want to, but. <laughs> Everybody expects it of me, but then I want to fulfill what everyone expects of me, so it becomes desire. Mm. I want to fit in, I want to get the recognition. I want to have that tick that I did. <laughs> Often it's the tick, right? 
And even today with these proposals, this madness of proposals, they've been dating three years. We know they're going to get married. What is this proposal all about? Is she really going to say no? <laughs> is it Shreyas? <laughs> it could be. It could not be. Yeah. Shreyas is... I start thinking more than me and mind to everybody, and then not just my family, to the implications that we each have in the totality of things. Each one of us are connected into total mind. Ishwara principle is every single one of us put together plus, 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 plus. Every thought every single one of us think is in total mind. And then collectively, all the thoughts we think, whichever becomes the predominant thought, becomes the psyche of that area, becomes the culture of that area, becomes the vibe of that area. Mm. There's definitely a collective psyche that we are all plugged into, and we contribute to it, and it contributes to us. It works both ways. Yeah. If any of you have traveled to Hong Kong, the minute you get off the flight, you will walk faster. <laughs> In Hong Kong, you cannot walk slow. If you walk slow, people glare at you <laughs> as they walk past you. <laughs> the collective psyche in Hong Kong is you walk at a beat. <laughs> you get off the flight in Jakarta and you leisurely stroll. <laughs> There's a collective psyche. We are all plugged into total mind. So, total mind is affecting us. What's the current fashion? What's the current slang words? What's the current opinion? So often people will voice out their opinion. It's not their opinion. <laughs> It's an opinion that they heard that they're recycling. Mm. Mm. But each one of us also contributes to total mind. Mm. As much as I'm influenced by total mind, I contribute to total mind. So when I am present, when I am consciously saying things, consciously doing things, consciously making choices, yeah. I am adding that energy, that presence, that love, that intention into conscious mind. Mm. I mean, total mind. Okay. When I'm thinking, what is Shreyas? It's not just for me. It's my contribution into total mind. Every one of us get home and we're tired and uh, lazy now, don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. Laziness gets contributed into total mind. Each one of us feel we've had enough and we think, now I don't care. I don't care gets added into total mind. Mm -hmm. If each one of us care, if each one of us puts in effort, that gets added to total mind, right? Mm. I think there's few countries where they so, um, it's almost positive social pressure in each other. When I visit Australia, they don't have one dustbin. It's like five dustbins. Throwing out your garbage in Australia is serious business. <laughs> I forget the name of it, but they have one where you throw fruit skins, um, food. Um, it basically, it goes into the compost, but they have some fancy name for it. <clears throat> um, 
the bin. Because they have five, right? <laughs> then plastic, of course, goes into one. Bottles goes into glass, gets recycled separately. Oh, and you look at us. What are we doing? Whereas there they so diligent. If I put something in the wrong bin, somebody will look at me. Yeah. Like, you know that you uncultured, careless, insensitive, irresponsible person. <laughs> Just like in Hong Kong, they'll glare at you if you're walking too slow. <laughs> in Australia, if you're not being diligent about your recycling, yeah. it can be such a positive contribution to total mind. Yeah. Like really when I go there, I feel so ashamed that we really don't do as much. Yeah. And it's so easy to do. The system is set up, you just do it. Yeah. Okay, it takes little instead of 30 seconds, it takes two minutes. This goes here, this goes here, this. But what's it's fine, right? Hmm. Shreyas. Hmm. Am I being daring enough to do? Am I being um, dynamic enough to do? Yeah. Something, again, I'll give a simple example. We can be so lost in our own worlds. <clears throat> we can walk through a shopping mall, a, a supermarket, or a street, not notice anybody else because we have our wonderful phones to keep us distracted. And then if we're not on our phones, we're in our wonderful daydream to keep us distracted. Yeah. Or we can greet and acknowledge those who are not on their phones. <laughs> yeah. But that's effort. It's effort. Are we dynamic enough to do it? Yeah. In Asia, we have so many watchmen or, or you know, people opening the door for us. So easy to just totally ignore them. We important people, right? And we're so busy. Mm. Mm. We can acknowledge them. They can smile. We can thank them. It's effort. Is it that hard also? Yeah. Actually, here they're so sweet. They're so sweet in greeting us. Yeah. Their collective mind here is genuinely very hospitable. Mm. Very humble, very... Yeah, welcoming. Yeah. Are we responding the same way? Okay. Shreyas. Little effort needed, not that much. But it's Shreyas. Why? Why is that Shreyas? Because we all know people are more important than anything else. We already know, right? I don't have to tell you. People are more important than money. All of you will say yes. <laughs> yeah. Then are we giving two seconds to people? <laughs> My people. <laughs> My people I give to. Then that's not Shreyas. Yeah. Also another very, very beautiful thing when I was... Um, I researching ourselves. I was researching on love. Pujo Gurudev's I Love You Letters book, I was helping to reformat and restructure it to make it a little bit more current and applicable. And <clears throat> often we feel in the book, I've mentioned previously also, I think at that workshop that we did, we feel that with certain people, I will do. With the rest, I don't have to do. But it doesn't work that way. Whoever we are, we are with all people. 
It's like lemon. Lemon isn't sour to most people and sweet to two, three. It will be sour to all people. Whatever is our nature, that's what will come out. So even with the ones we really love and want to be really nice with, unless we that way with other people also, we won't be that way with the ones we want to be. Mm. And so every action that we do, when we talk about Shreyas, yes, it's for everyone else as well, and the global and the total mind, but it's also about creating who I am. Yeah. It's like when we learn something new, and you have to practice it and practice it and practice it, and then it becomes automatic. <clears throat> How automatic is it for you to unlock your phone? Why? Because apparently we do it something like 200 times a day. <laughs> so easy, right? But when I mean, it's a new iOS and they've changed something, then suddenly you stop. Huh? Now what to do? <laughs> if we do something regularly, it's autopilot. When we want to be attentive to the ones we love, we have to be attentive all the time. So that when we're with the ones we love, it's autopilot. When we want to be patient with ourselves, when we're learning something new, we have to be patient with everyone else. This is also very interesting. We different we think we're different with ourselves than we are to other people, but it's not possible. We treat ourselves the same way we treat other people. When we harsh on ourselves, we will be harsh on other people. If I want to be gentle on myself, I have to learn to be gentle with other people. Mm. If I want to be supportive of myself, I have to be supportive of other people. If I want to be supportive of the ones I love, I have to be supportive with all people. We are not compartments. We are whole beings. Mm. And so when we with one person, our whole being is with this person. Then we with the next being, our whole being is with this person. And you might say, no, I'm different with different people. <clears throat> Yes, our synergy and our energy with different people might be different because personalities are reacting with personalities. Yeah, chemistry reacting with chemistry. But the essence of who we are doesn't change. Hmm. So with someone I like, I might be a little bit more casual, a little bit more forgiving. But if I'm very strict with myself, even with that person that I like, that I'm a little bit casual and easygoing with, it will come out. They turn up late for an event and watch. <laughs> or they forget to bring something I told them to bring, it will come out. So... So yes, we're not totally the same. But whatever we are will come out. There's a saying in Italy, I don't know Italian, so I'm going to give you the English version of it. If you eat garlic, everyone can smell it. <laughs> 
and they'll be able to smell it on your mouth. I mean, Italians eat a lot of garlic, right? So it's a phase that goes in. That's it's like every day. <laughs> Meaning, whatever I am inside comes out. Because, I mean, we may not be aware of it, but once we've eaten something, it becomes our body odor also. <clears throat> We smell differently based on what we eat. We don't need to go into it that much. Even just when you speak to someone, we can smell what they've eaten, right? <clears throat> but the point is, what's going to come out? Only what's inside can come out. If I didn't put it inside, I can't take it out. So suddenly I'm with you and I want to be patient with you, but I can't be because it's not inside. I didn't put it in. What is Shreyas? This is why people don't like listening to spiritual lectures. It's hard work. But the beautiful thing about it is, it's only hard work initially. Afterwards, it becomes easy. Yeah. Anything, even texting on the phone, getting used to that keypad, you take tick, 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 tick. Then the kids. <laughs> it's only hard initially. Yeah. So, anything. People even learning how to public speak or changing their accent. New growing trend. <laughs> no, you all haven't heard of it? <laughs> Neutralizing accent because we live in a global world. <laughs> okay. So they practice how to not be so accented when they talk. Usually in public speaking or so much now with social media, right? So much as, yeah. Sometimes we can't understand accents. I know I go to India and sometimes they're just looking at me. I think it's perfectly clear, but they can't understand what I'm saying because they look at the other person and they'll say, what is she saying? I can't understand her accent and I'm talking English and they speak perfect English. <laughs> so, to neutralize it so that it's more understandable. It's not a vanity thing, it's actually quite practical. <clears throat> the way we say word has become so habituated. To change the way we pronounce something takes so much attention. Because you just you don't know when that word is gonna come, when that sound is gonna come. So much presence of mind. Yeah. And then it becomes normal. We're not thinking about it anymore. Shreyas. Difficult in the beginning. Then the benefits are so much. So if I am a teacher and I do want somebody to understand me and my accent is an obstacle, then that effort of learning how to speak in a way that's more clear I reach so many more people. And my interaction is now so easy because they're understanding me. <laughs> Initially difficult. The benefits is immense. Yeah. To go against the current trend. Initially difficult. Benefits are long, 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 long lasting. Could you go there? Where's his picture? <laughs> there. <laughs> mm. Could you go there in the 50s? Started Chinmay Mission. It is written to speak this, the scripture. It's not written in scriptures. It was written by the educated people of the time. To speak the scriptures in English is a sin. Mm. 
It will bring you power. In fact, even recently I heard somebody speaking on the Vishnu Sahasranam. And he said, I know I'm speaking in English, but I will take the pap because I want you all to understand me. I thought that thinking still there in we in 1923. Yeah. No, we in 2023. <laughs> I knew I said something wrong. <laughs> You all, all, all nicely agreed. We're in 2023 and that thinking is still there in traditional um, ashrams and villages in India that to speak in the scriptures in English is a pap. I mean, he, he spoke, but he said, I know I'm doing pap. <clears throat> um, in the 50s, can you imagine the mindset in the 50s? That if you speak the scriptures in English, you are going against our culture, you are committing a sin, was the mindset. Prior to that, to even speak the scriptures in a non-Sanskrit language was considered sin. When Tulsi Dasji first wrote the Ramayan in Audi, it was like, what are you doing? Scripture should only be in Sanskrit. Yeah. Gyaneshwar Maharaj wrote in Marathi, it was shunned. These are Indian languages, but it was shunned. It should be only in Sanskrit. Then it changed. <clears throat> they started talking in Hindi and Audi and Marathi and Odissi and um, Bengali in every language. We had Gita, every language we had Upanishad. Gurudev spoke in English. Mm. And people cursed him May your tongue split in two. This is in the 1950s. <clears throat> Imagine if he didn't speak in English. Where would we, where would I be? I, I would not have reached. Mm -hmm. yeah. My Hindi is Bollywood English, which is useless when you want to learn scriptures. Because mm. when they speak scriptures, it has to be proper. You have to understand the terminology. This topic is so intricate. It's so subtle. If you don't understand the word, you don't get it at all. And I had read, I had watched Ramana Sagar's Ramayan long, long, long ago, that old, old one. Still very popular though, right? I'm sure most of you all are familiar with it. <clears throat> it was 24 cassettes, VHS cassettes of three hours each. I don't know if you all watched. I watched. Why? I have no idea. Actually, I do now. Because it's in Shuddha Hindi. I only understood what was happening by the pictures. Hmm? Every episode of that Ramayan, a Santa Mahatma spoke on the glory and the beauty of the Ramayan. They all spoke in Hindi. I didn't understand a word. I usually forwarded. Watched the pictures. Learned basic story of Ramayan from the pictures. I mean, the acting. Y'all, y'all have all seen the series. It's um, it's a, a blessing to India because so many people reveled in that story. One episode. The Swami started speaking in English. Yeah. 24 cassettes, three hours long. How many episodes that are? Y'all please do the math. And one spoke in. It was the only thing I understood. 24 times three, somebody please tell me. 72 hours I watched and I only understood 10 minutes. Naturally, I fell in love with this person who was none other than 
for Jagaradev. I was so thirsty for the knowledge that I watched 72 hours. Didn't understand. But I had to watch to find Gurudev. And in that whole Ramayana, he spoke only 10 minutes. Mm. Mm. Shreyas, what is Shreyas? If he wasn't daring enough to speak, even though everyone cursed. How to choose what's right? Broaden who you're thinking about. Mm. These great saints and sages, they even thought of the next generation. And many of you are parents, you'll think of the next generation. What world are we going to leave for them? Yeah. That's why this recycling thing also comes up so often. What world? But that's the physical world, right? Of course we must recycle. Of course we have to prevent um, the resources from all being depleted because we want to leave the... This world is so beautiful with the mountains and nature. and We want them to see that same beauty. We don't want them to see garbage piles and garbage piles and garbage piles. Yeah. We want them to see the same beauty that we see. We want to leave physically the beautiful world for them. And then emotionally, what world are we leaving for them? Morally, what world are we leaving for them? Hmm. To leave this world with the values that we know enrich our lives, we have to live Shreyas. We have to live those values completely so that the next generation sees it clearly. If we live the values only 50%, they can't see it clearly. They won't know what to do. They won't know when to do it, when not to do it. Because we do it sometimes, we don't do it sometimes. When to do? <laughs> Shreyas is a, it's a huge ask. Right? What is Shreyas? Is me being my very best. Mm. Now I can be my very best sometimes. Don't ask me to be my very best all the time. Shreya says, be your very best all the time. And why does it sound exhausting? Because we're not doing it. When we do it, it stops being tiring. Mm -hmm. I was in London earlier this year and there was a um, doctor who had finished his rotation and then come for the talk. Now doctor's job is intense and post-COVID hospitals have all been strained. <laughs> they have a lot to do. Plus that rotation thing is quite long, huh? I know he went in at 5.30 in the morning. The talks are now at, there it was, 7.30 we started, or 8. I'm like you here. And you know when I'm looking at the room full of people listening to me, some are sleepy, some are distracted. He's alert. I was like, how? Okay. How are you not tired at the end of the day when you have done such a stressful job? No. I'm quite okay, Swaminiji. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Practice. He doesn't want work to be the only thing he does. He's just practiced being energetic after work and going out and doing many other things. 
goes and plays sports with these kids one day, he'll come into the ashram another day. It's easy. He's not struggling. Hmm. Is he at his best? Yes. Is it hard? No. Hmm. Hmm. We'll see it in the ashram also often. Sevadars have you know, at the end of the day. <clears throat> Sometimes Pavai Ashram, I was telling people earlier today, Pavai Ashram has more than a million people come in. Shravan was just, we in the middle, Shravan got halved. Doesn't matter if you all don't know all these things. And then Shravan is going to start again. On the Shravan Samwar, which means a Monday and the month dedicated to Shiva, it's considered highly auspicious and more people will go to a Shiva Mandir. A million people come. Easily. From three in the morning. You think you go four in the morning, the Mandir will be quiet? No, it's not. There's already lots of people there. And so we've got Sevaks in the Mandir. And they break at least a million coconuts in the day. Because <laughs> that's how many come in the day. And then some of them... At the end of the day, like, they don't talk to me. <laughs> and some of them at the end of the day, happy to do more. How can I help? Mm. When we think about doing our best all the time, we think oh, it's too large and ask. But it's not. When we learn how to breathe properly, most of us don't, but when we do learn how to breathe properly and then it becomes habit, we're doing it all the time. It's not a big ask, breathe properly. No, I'm tired now today, I can't. No. <laughs> Some of us have to practice good posture because this is so, that is so, that is so. And then after a while, they're doing it all the time. They look like they just came out of finishing school. <laughs> Why are you sitting so straight? Can you please relax? No, no, this is how I sit. I'm fine. <laughs> it becomes so natural. To not do it is unnatural. Yeah. Shreyas. Put in that little bit of effort. A few months. It becomes easy. It just becomes who you are. It becomes second nature. Mm. So, to do everything in one go is a bit overwhelming. So choose what you're going to work on today. Smiling and greeting people. And then that becomes second nature. Then, being more patient. Letting people finish their sentences before I contribute my opinion. <laughs> that might take a bit longer. <laughs> Smiling is easier than being patient. <laughs> After a while, that becomes easy. Hmm. Hmm. Being a little bit more disciplined. Yeah. With whatever. Which are, I'm talking more about virtues. Huh? I'm not talking about eat right. That is 300 people telling you all already. Be a bit more disciplined with virtues. Virtues means things like having courage, mm, forgiving, mm, showing kindness, having compassion, mm, listening to the other point of view, mm, not being judgmental. Have discipline in practicing these. Because these are the things where we say, this is where I say, be my authentic self. No, don't be. If your authentic self is judgmental, don't be your authentic self. If your authentic self is impatient, no need for you to be your authentic self. <laughs> Yeah. In a group discussion with the youth, this, this is one of the girls, we were talking about equipoise. Um, equipoise comes up often in the Gita. It's to not react to likes and dislikes. 
So whether I like you or whether I dislike you, to treat you the same way. It's a huge mm, ask. So one of the girls, and you know, in the youth discussion, we encourage. We encourage discussion. We encourage questions. We encourage them to voice what they're thinking. And she said, you know, but if shouldn't I be true to myself? Shouldn't I be my authentic self? If I dislike a person, then I dislike them. Okay, if you want to be authentic and you dislike a person, then you feel you have a right to dislike them. Okay, if you're going to watch a movie. <laughs> but if you were a teacher in the class, is it okay for me to dislike you? If I'm a doctor with a patient, is it okay for me to dislike you? If I'm a judge passing a verdict, is it okay for me to dislike you? Should I be authentic to my likes and dislikes? It's not Shreyas. It's definitely not Shreyas. What's actually authentic is for me to be objective. Giving in to my dislike is not being authentic. Yeah. It's giving in to likes and giving in to dislikes. And giving in to my shortcoming, because me liking some people and not liking some people is a shortcoming. Because we all beautiful people. Mm. We all lovable people. Be authentic to our divine self. Uh, that will see the person in front of you and honor that this is life. Mm. This is somebody on their journey doing what they can. Maybe their best, it may not be the best, but that's what they can at the moment. We also have days when we can't do our best. Mm. We have months, maybe years. <laughs> Where we're not doing our best. <laughs> Shreyas, <clears throat> do what is best. Be what is best in our actions, in our relationships, and even in our desires. Right? Want what is best. Yeah. At least start there. At least start with wanting it. Yeah. When I was much younger, I'm not very proud of this, but it's a good story to tell. Whenever anyone asked me, what do you want? I used to say, world peace. <laughs> this is even before I joined the ashram, huh? <laughs> So what do you want for dinner? World peace. What do you want for your birthday? World peace. <laughs> of course, it irritated my friends and family to no end. <laughs> right. Any wish, you know, like when the shooting star, well, all this, what do you want? World peace. It sounded, I sounded like those beauty pageant people. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> When we asked, what do you want? Is our goal that big? What do you want? How big is your desire? Hmm. Is it just for you? Just for your family? Mm. Is it for Jakarta? Is it for this planet? Is it for humanity? Mm. I think when I said it as a kid, I didn't understand the fullness of what I was saying. 
Maybe I was aspiring for something, not quite sure what I was aspiring for. But this much I knew. It shouldn't be me. It has to be bigger. What do you want? And then, what are you doing to create it? And Puja Guru there was so clear how to make this world a better place. He used to give the example of a wall. How to make a beautiful wall? Each brick that you put in there should be beautiful. How to make a strong wall? Each brick you put in there should be strong. What do we want? We want a beautiful world. And each one of us are the bricks. Mm. How beautiful are we making ourselves? How strong are we making ourselves? And our beauty is definitely our virtues and values. Our wisdom, our talents, our smiles, our love. Mm. So Shreyas, let's choose what is best for everyone. Mm. That's the path all of us need to walk. I pause here for today. You're welcome to ask questions if you have any. Yes. Yes. I my mother and grandmas. I've seen their life more in the Yes. Yes, correct. Oh my Look after yourself. Yes, might be selfish a little bit. You know, selfish in the same selfish for myself, for my own development. You know, like if I feel okay, I'm so looking after ourselves is not selfish. Looking after ourselves and fulfilling make looking after our health is definitely not selfish. In fact, when we don't look after our health and we lose our health, we're not able to give as much. Whereas if we maintain our energy, we maintain our health, we can continue to keep giving. So looking after our own health is Shreyas, and it's not selfish. Hmm. What I meant was that there is only that much we can do for everybody. The essence, we have to keep everybody in mind. But the thing is, for our own development, sometimes we have to focus on ourselves. And in a way, if we are a better brick, like, like you gave the example of a brick, you know, if we work on ourselves, uh, then in a way, we are also leading by example, you know? So, I don't know, I agree 100% with what you said, but, uh, but what I got is that the best way to follow what you said is to overcome likes and dislikes, overcome duality, and then see yourself in the other person, your own self, and then it'll be natural. So mm -hmm. I agree, agree, I'm sorry, but just mm -hmm. too much of Shreyas, just, you know. Too much of Shreyas. <laughs> <laughs> like I see my mom, you know, and she's been Shreyas all her life. And now when I see her old and I feel her suffering, I was, I feel pity, I feel mom, I wish you had 
focus more a little bit more on yourself even the ones who focus on themselves get old <laughs> yes and even if they focused on themselves when they get old there is suffering in old age you cannot avoid whatever is inevitable when the body deteriorates we will feel some kind of discomfort and there is even the sadness of loss of ability whether we focused on ourselves or we focused on others yes. hmm i'll repeat looking after our health is not selfish but if we say it's okay to be little bit selfish what's little <laughs> where is that little we should understand the goal is selfless i'm not able to be completely selfless yet i still have some selfishness in me okay we are all walking at the speed we can walk at but the goal is selflessness the goal is not be only little bit selfish you go as far to the goal as you choose as you can but know that the goal is selflessness also know the goal can be achieved many 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 santa mahatma who have walked this earth achieved so many of our mothers grandmothers fathers grandfathers reached so close hmm. did so much for us before they left hmm. goal is selflessness is it hard yes do we want it maybe <laughs> then we have to be honest i don't want to be selfless hmm. i'm finding it hard to be selfless but goal is selfless don't bring the goal down never bring the goal down yeah you take as many steps close as you want to go you don't want to go all the way okay mm. but don't bring the goal down mm. because the next person might want to reach all the way the next generation might actually reach all the way let the goal be clear how much i want to do i'll do mm. bhagwan's not compelled us to do at the end of 18 chapters of the gita krishna tells arjuna i have taught you what is shreyas he uses the word again now it's up to you to choose what you want to do krishna doesn't end the gita by saying do what i said krishna ends the gita by saying it's your choice arjuna and krishna says karishye vachanam tava i will do what you said but choice was given mm. so when we and when we read the scriptures understand clearly and then understand also krishna has given us choice how much you want to do you do mm. 
There's, the compulsion has not been put. In Hinduism, zero compulsion has been put because the laws will work. These are the laws. You do as you need to do. The laws will work. The knowledge is to guide you how to maneuver through the laws. Not to obligate you. So goal should remain clear. Yeah. Is it okay to be selfish? Nay. Little bit? Nay. <laughs> but I'm going to be okay. Mm. Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha, sarve santu niramaya, sarve bhadrani pashyantu, ma kashyata kabak bhavet, asatoma satkamaya, tamasoma jyotir gamaya, mrityorma amritam gamaya, om purnamata, Purnamidam, Purna, Purnamatachyate, Purnasya, Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vashishyate, Om Shanti, 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 Shanti Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Arihiyam